What's up, magical people? Welcome back to your most magical life. I'm Mia Magic. Today we're doing something very special. My very first witch reacts video is gonna be about me. <laughs> and a video that was made when Sky Life, who I'm sure some of you are familiar with, came to my retreat at a magical castle in Scotland. We do lots of deep, wild, serious rituals out there. And so I figured, what better first witch reacts video could I possibly do than one that's about me and my practice and the craft that I share. So I'm gonna do this. I've never done it before, but I figure I'll just be able to like deepen and dive into a little of the pieces, parts, aspects, elements of my craft and my teachings that maybe people don't understand fully or don't know that much about. I have a really unique relationship to the craft. I've studied many ancient wisdom traditions. I'm not just like a spell casting witch. Um, I really got my start in like quantum physics and conspiracy theories, if I'm being perfectly honest. And so my spiritual journey was very deep before I even claimed the word witch for myself. People would call me super witchy and you know, I'd be like, no, I'm a wizard like Harry Potter. And so I've studied many, many different modalities, many ancient wisdom traditions, and that's why my craft is so unique. That's why I'm able to hold really deep space for people to go into profound healing experiences. And to me, the essence of magic really is healing. We have to heal our blocks and our witch wounds and our pain and our challenges in order to be able to manifest anything that we desire. Otherwise, like if your subconscious is not believing that it's possible, then it's gonna be very unlikely for anything that you desire to happen. And I know lots of you who are interested in my craft and the way that I do things have asked about a lower cost offering and being able to access my work in a way that is really easy and affordable and your wish has been granted. We are going to be starting on the Aries new moon, April 19th, a 30 day or like moon cycle money magic manifestation abundance ritual challenge because I really wanted to create something that is supportive to all of you and this ritual, y'all, is so magical and so juicy. You're gonna love it. I am so excited. So if you have been feeling called to any of my programs or wanting to come to my, one of my retreats, this is really an absolutely spectacular way to join because it's really going to amp up your abundance. We're gonna be doing this practice all together. Literally, I did the second day man meditation. And as soon as I did, I got the biggest podcast opportunity that I've ever had. And so there's so many different forms of abundance that are waiting for all of us and spiritual people deserve money and abundance in order to make change, duh. So click the link below if you would like to join us on April 19th for our 30 day moon cycle money magic abundance ritual manifestation. So let's dive in and I'm gonna just show you guys how I feel about this video. Ready? <laughs> I love the intro music, so good. Right off the bat, this could look a little unusual, right? But that's why I said that witchcraft to me is about healing because witch means wise and craft actually means strength or skill. And in order to strengthen the skill of our wisdom, we have to heal what hinders it, right? We have to heal the blockages that we have to and from it. So also I know that some people might be wary of me having an eagle feather. I just wanna to speak to that really quick. Um, I was gifted this eagle feather by an eagle herself named Artemis um, at the first Scotland retreat that I led. We had a falconer come, which was a whole nother story and video in and of itself. Hey, my little girl. And it was uh, not a very humane experience to me. And I didn't feel like engaging with the eagle. And when she, when I approached her just to look at her beautiful dragon feet, she flapped her wings and molted me a feather. So this is not like any type of cultural appropriation. This was literally a gift from the goddess. Her name was Artemis. And uh, truly, I feel like she felt like I was meant to have it. So just so you know why I have an eagle feather with me. It's very, very sacred. It's one of my most cherished uh, sacred objects. When most people hear the word witch, they have a completely warped perception of what that word means and what real magic actually is. But if you come on this journey with me, I'm going to show you the truth for Mia Magic's witchcraft retreat, where uh, this week we will- That first shot, come on, iconic. Like not to toot my own horn, but beep beep. She looks so good coming out of those castle doors. I'm like, yes, queen, get it. <laughs> studying real witchcraft. I feel like I'm going to the real life Hogwarts where I'm good. That's what my retreats are, going to the real life Hogwarts, just so you know. 
these beautiful flashes and b-roll of her uh, at the seaside when I first drove there for my first retreat. I was literally asking the driver, I was like, hey, do you guys have much wildlife here? And he was like, oh, I don't know, there's kind of like seals every once in a while. And I'd like heard all the myths about silkies. And literally, as soon as he said that, I looked right out and there was this beautiful seal like jumping up onto a rock. And then I ended up having some serious, magical, silky initiations throughout this experience like, whoa, with like painting my body with seaweed and feeling my seal skin. I mean, like, it's so magical. Oh my God, it's, I'm like, ah. I love this experience. Creating this retreat and this experience is literally like the most magical thing in my entire life. It's such an incredible gift and honor. I manifested this room. Oh my God. How do you feel? Like a goddess. She did. That queen, Alexis, she came to both of my Scotland retreats last year. And when she was like, I'm coming back for the second time, I was like, girl, you get the queen suite. Like you get the mastress bedroom. So I, I chose that for her specifically. And I love that she manifested it because she didn't even ask me for it. I just gave it to her. And now that queen is on my team working with me. We worked together one-on-one -on -one at the beginning of this year. Like, oh, she's such an incredible gift. So she deserved that queen room and always will. This castle is unreal. I'm here for my friend Mia Magic's retreat. Mia Magic is a witch. She is my friend, my mentor, and teacher. And I've learned magic from her in the past, and it's worked. Mia Magic is a force of nature. She is a true witch. She has put in years and years of study into witchcraft and real magic. And she is absolutely the person to lead a magical experience like this. Which Oh my goddess, come on. Like <laughs> that intro, yes, thank you, received. Uh, I am a force of nature. I am, I admit it. So it's really, it's so beautiful, you know, when women can support one another. And Sky has been such a beautiful baby witch student and we have done lots of incredible spells and, and work together. And just so you guys know, if you've seen any of our other videos together, every single time that we do one of those spells, we start with a coaching session. The way that the videos are edited, they look, you know, how they look. And obviously I'm not in charge of any of the editing, like that's her process. But every single one of those, like the love spell that she met her boyfriend two weeks later, or whatever it was, the money spell where she was, you know, within a month making more money than she'd ever made. All of those experiences, we started with a really deep coaching session. And so that's how, again, in my version of the craft and of strengthening the skill of my wisdom, that's where the healing and the importance of that really comes in. Then you can unearth whatever in the way and work on that because it's not about working with the spell it's about working with what's preventing the spell from being manifest because of something that you may or may not be aware of in your subconscious mind witchcraft and real magic is nothing like we're taught in the movies all of that has been so manipulated and it's just not accurate to what real witches are actually doing it so this is a huge piece that's really important that I talk about a lot and have been sharing more about. But the reason why witches became evil is because of the papacy, because of the patriarchy, because people who were trying to get our money and our tithings and our taxes and like take all of our resources from us made the people who had sovereign healing powers, who knew how to work with the cycles of the moon and the cycles of nature and understand the herbs, like especially with, you know, natural birth control. And now all the major religions, it's like go forth and multiply. And so if you knew how, again, to be sovereign, to take care of yourself and you didn't need anyone between you and the divine, between you and the earth, Earth, then like you're very hard to control and so that's why witches have been made to be evil by the patriarchy I have a lot of other videos on this if you're interested but it really is so sad that like you know the witch became evil and in so many Disney movies you'll see that like the witch is this evil being like Snow White Cinderella whatever it is like and then there's the princess and the princess is you know, deeply connected to nature. She almost always has a familiar. She's like very connected to the wilderness. And that is actually a deep nod, like one of the kind of last remaining little figments of us being deeply connected to nature and us being in our wild. And it's creating this dichotomy between us being connected to nature and the witch when really like the witches were the ones who were connected to nature. And now it's like, oh, the sweet princess. 
Welcome to your most magical life! <laughs> First of all, I'm so glad you guys are here. This is my absolute greatest honor and pleasure to be creating this experience. I hope that you all find the way to hear the song of this land because it's so magical and so beautiful. Yes, there's a castle and like, woohoo, and that's great. <laughs> when we're inside, we're in luxury. And when we're outside, we're in nature and we are with the earth and we are with the goddess as she has always been. Oh, I just love my own words there. <laughs> but the one of the things that's so magical about when I feel drawn to go to a place and especially lead a retreat somewhere, um, I'd never even set foot in Scotland when I found this castle and knew that I was meant to lead a retreat there. And the moment that I set foot on that land. She guided me. Of course, I had like an itinerary. I had an idea of what I was going to do for the first retreat. And literally the land told me, she was like, okay, come down here, lead the unicorn activation, do the dragon meditation up here. Like I want them to experience dragons this way. Like do this over here. We're going to do a rage ritual. Like there was just all these pieces of guidance. The land literally sang her songs to me. I, I went um, for a couple of days before the retreat started and I got to stay there by myself, which was so epic. And I sat at this stream in this creek bed and I felt a unicorn like galloping down the creek bed at me. And unicorns are the national animal of Scotland and there's no accident there. It, they really, you can feel them. And two girls at the first retreat that there isn't a video about, but they saw a unicorn. They came in like, <sighs> like, oh my God, oh my God, like high, like lit up. And it was two of them, like they'd both seen it in the royal crest of the United Kingdom, the lion, which is the symbol of England, has a unicorn with a chain around its neck. And that's a symbol of like stealing the magical energy of Scotland, the same as the, the British Empire did in Ireland as well, which is where my retreat is coming up in May. Lots of magic here, lots of deeper significance. Deep, powerful, transformative healing work here that will allow you to embody whatever your most magical self is because I can't teach you spells. Like I can teach you how to write a spell, but that's not actually in my experience what has made my life most magical. What has made my life magical is healing my mindset and transforming how I think and feel about things. So if I help you change your mind, and change your heart and change where you store trauma in your body, then your manifestations, whatever you wanna do for it, it's gonna be easier. You're gonna hit edges and that's totally understandable. That's what happens in healing work. We get triggered. What I ask of you is to take responsibility for it. You're here to find what that queendom is for each of us. It's empowered queendom. It's, it's like, oh, what a blessing it is to be this queen. That's how it is for all of us. Just so you guys all know, the real truth is, is that in its essence, our, everyone's magic, everyone's gifts, they're gonna look different. They're gonna be something unique to you. It's not gonna look like anybody else's magic. And that's one of the pieces in my retreats is like, I've had people get worked up at me, right? Like when we do healing work, we get triggered and, and things come up. And so um, I give that speech at the beginning of my retreats because I want people to be self-responsible and and like I can handle projections. I fucking been handling them my whole life. That speech was a much longer speech around like taking responsibility for your triggers. And if something comes up, if you feel jealous of me or angry at me or like frustrated at someone else and you feel like talking shit about them or whatever, like, no, that's a hard fucking no. That's a hard boundary, not allowed here. And the invitation is to look at the mirror that is you, right? Even when you're pointing something, you're like, oh, you, 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 like you did this. I don't like this. It's like, boop, hello. Where does that live inside of me? So it's a deeper, deeper conversation, but very important. The first night, it was the Aries full moon. The intention with our full moon ritual is to burn away any of the self-abandonment or doubt or unworthiness. We give that to the fire, to the element of transformation so that then we can kind of start with a fresh slate for the whole experience. I immediately noticed that there was very much a theme of oppression and abuse. And the reality is that so many women experience that in all places in the world. And part of this experience here is to reclaim our power, knowing that we are no longer victims, knowing that healing is possible. That's the whole experience. Reclaiming your power, no longer being a victim, and knowing that your healing is possible <laughs> in every way, and doing it together in sisterhood.
unworthiness it feels like a chokehold around my neck anytime we feel like a deep constriction in our throat like around our neck that's generally a witch wound expression because we were not allowed to speak up if you spoke up or out against the patriarchy against like the preachers and the witch hunters who were coming around and killing people for no reason because they were connected to the earth because they were worshiping God in the way that human beings have for the last you know hundred thousand years of our species and consciousness you were the next victim so that's a huge place that the witch wound shows up I am everything I want to be. I have everything I need. That was so fun. I was literally up in my room, like chilling with the night had ended. And I just hear like all this blood curdling screaming after the fire ritual. I was like, okay, good. We're still going. Like, yes, the magic is happening. And they were all just like screaming their fucking brains out. It was so great. And that song, it's a beautiful chorus song. And I had a really powerful experience with that song. I heard it, you know, many, many years ago. And then two years ago for my birthday, I was leading a ritual, was leading sex magic for someone else's retreat in my hometown in the Redwoods in Northern California, where I'm leading my other retreat <laughs> next month. Oh my goddess, I was sitting there and I was like the elder of the group. Everyone was like in their early 20s. And that's the first song that the leader of the retreat started singing with us and it was such an incredible gift to realize like wow that has become true I am everything I want to be and I have everything I need and it was such a profound gift so um, it's a beautiful mantra that I love to use for all of my retreats and experiences. The rage ritual as you know is one of my favorite practices because most women have been shamed for their anger. What we're gonna do is we're going to start with the breathing and then after a few minutes we're gonna go into the feelings. Right now, I feel. <laughs> right now, I feel enraged. Right now, I feel sad. Right now, I feel disappointed. Whatever you're feeling, and you get it out. And then you grab your sticks and. <laughs> if your inner child needs a minute to be held, that's okay. But then keep going. <laughs> it's like so emotional for me to watch this because. It's just such a gift to give people permission to feel. That's a huge piece of my, my mission and my transmission, my permission. It's such an incredible blessing to lead this kind of work. And I learned this particular practice, gathering the sticks, getting yourself fired up from my teacher, Ali Bogard. And then some of the additions, like right now I feel is from my, my sis, Rachel Pringle. It's such a profound, incredible ritual. It's such a gift. And as you can see, I just go full force. I have no shortage of rage at the patriarchy to you know purge in these experiences. The anger, and the disappointment, I feel undesirable. I feel sad. Every moment, every step, every breath, you are in the hand of the goddess. This is the mother we all share. This holy, sacred, great mother. <laughs> After. Oh my goddess, Arelis is kissing the tree. She was singing. She was singing in English and Spanish. She was just so beautiful. She was right next to me. Oh my goddess, it's like watching these women like covered in the earth, <laughs> purging things that they maybe never let themselves touch before. It's just <laughs> like, thank you, goddess. Thank you for my life. It's okay to feel that anger. That's the first time I think I've ever actually felt anger. It's been so long, I've just, just kept blocking it. So true. Like so many people have never even felt that kind of rage because like women are taught not to. Like, don't you fucking show that. Don't you dare. It's like, what the fuck? Like, I'm angry. There's a lot to be angry about. Look at how we treat the planet. 
watching yourself cry. <laughs> uh, that moment was so profoundly precious to me. Just watching women in my first retreat, everyone had said like that was their favorite moment, just singing in the cave together because caves are the wombs of the earth. And so watching them and hearing that song, being the children of the goddess and of the earth, of the moon, it just touched me so deeply. <laughs> I was just overcome. I couldn't even keep singing. So precious. Just like that this gets to be my life. <laughs> I'm just so grateful. The most important thing for me to remind you of is that you are a child of this mother. <laughs> Nothing else that really matters. <laughs> Nothing. The divine assignment for her is just to help other women remember <laughs> our connection to her and that all we need is that. It's the source of all abundance. It's the source. She is our source. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can People think that abundance is about money. Yeah, it's been really great for me to become a wealthy witch, <laughs> a wealthy woman. Uh, I was so fucking broke for so many years. Um, and it gives me a lot of freedom. And I get to say yes to like trips to Antarctica and to be able to rent castles and all of those things. And that's amazing. But there's no greater abundance than having a deep connection to the earth and feeling grounded in your knowing that you are a reflection of her, that your body your bones are the stones in the mountains. The blood in your veins are your rivers. The breath in your lungs is the wind within you. And the fire that makes your heart beat is the light of the sun. It's electricity running through you in every moment. And then we all have this unique, ineffable spiritual spark. So just a friendly reminder that that's all there is really. And I've got an epic abundance ritual coming out for you all. It's gonna be a super healing, powerful practice for exactly this reason, to just remind you of the true nature of abundance that's inside of you and that comes from connecting to your true nature. Hear what she says if you're listening. Singing these songs felt so right, so natural, so beautiful to sit in sisterhood and to pray to the earth in song. This is something that humans have been doing for thousands of years. So much of this week and this experience is about coming back to those ancient primal roots that feel so good and so right in my body and my soul. That's my OG tagline, bringing the ancient way to the modern day, like this is it. The reason why drumming impacts us is because it's the first sound you ever hear because your mother's heartbeat is drumming away that whole time you're being formed. One of the things that is the pillar of this whole experience is that I just listen. I listen to what's happening in the group. I listen to the land. I listen to my personal guidance from the goddess. This week, the invitation from the goddess or from the land was to do an exercise to support people in feeling more comfortable with touch and being worthy of receiving the kind of touch that they desire and that was the one that that really came from the land that came from the goddess and the energy of this group and she said this is what they need please do this with them mia took us to the most beautiful meadow area to do a self-love practice during this experience i like to do all my rituals in nature as much as possible i pray to the goddess every time i go i'm like scotland everyone's like oh you're gonna get a lot of rain it's gonna be really bad weather I'm like no me and the weather gods, we got this shit. And so we have been able to do all of these deep healing rituals, especially the ones that require a little nudity, uh, out underneath this insane European beach canopy that's just, come on, it's so good. Where else would I rather do a ritual? Nowhere. And in May, oh my gosh, it was like purple blankets of bluebells everywhere. Oh, 
heaven. In this experience, I had a massive breakthrough. That's one of the amazing things about retreats. Everyone's gonna pop, everyone's gonna have like their blast off moment at a different experience. So some people had in the touch ritual, like that was it. It was like, I've never felt touched like that full breakthrough, blast off, like unbelievable experience. And then some people it's the breath work. Some people it's the breast massage. Some people it's sex magic. Some people it's singing. Some people it's like getting naked and diving into the sea together. Um, you know, some people it's the meditations or the dragon activations or whatever it is. It's like everyone has a different moment. There's a lot of different uh, little sisterhood practices that I, not little, serious, beautiful, magical, powerful sisterhood practices that I lead as well. Um, this is actually like a very small percentage of what we did in the retreat. It's like little tidbits of some of the things, but like the B-roll shows a lot of, um, you know, like what we were doing, but not like what we were doing. So um, yeah, it's so beautiful that everyone always has a different moment that is the thing that their soul really needed. Obviously like the rage ritual too. That's a, that's a big one. A lot of people, that's the moment. <laughs> Our ritual started with Mia guiding us through loving self-touch and heart-opening breath work. It felt like there was something stuck in my throat. Then I began feeling this pain and sadness bubble up in the root of my womb. In Tantra, which is really like the backbone of my witchcraft, the intention or like the the like deepest healing medicine for whenever you have a trauma response or you have a trigger is breath sound and movement so this experience that she's having like when you know we have this this like pain and her body's moving that's just innate deep like animal nature you see when an animal gets like worked up right they shake themselves off um that is it deep in our bodies to just like breathe deeper, make sounds and our, let our bodies move. So, you know, always like follow the moment, follow the energy and what's true for your body in those kinds of experiences. For those who have never done somatic healing work, it may be hard to understand what is actually happening here. I felt like I let that stored up sadness and hurt out of my body finally. So much of what we do, like creating a magical life, is just allowing your inner child to have its dreams and desires and, and needs met and fulfilled. That's my whole life, <laughs> really. And so when you do somatic healing work, when you do trauma work, you know, depending on your depth of trauma, right? Like there's a lot of different levels and layers. Some people have been severely abused and traumatized. Like it's gonna take more work to unearth those things. Uh, but the most important aspect and key and code to all of that is giving yourself permission to feel and, and take care of yourself in whatever way you need and create safety. You know, we have a whole conversation about safety before uh, the, the actual experience begins, but you know, you have to find a way to resource within yourself what makes you feel safe, what makes you feel okay to go into those spaces. And obviously working with like a trauma-informed coach, um, I have trauma-informed training, training, but I'm not a, a like trauma specialist. But you know, when we go into these kinds of experiences, the whole point is to be able to heal the wounding of the inner child in order to grant their wishes. And that's really like what my whole, you know, witchy fairy godmother kind of vibe is. It's like, I wanna live the life that makes my inner child happy and ecstatic and joyful and be able to give others permission to do the same. And that's so much of this experience is letting the pain and the hurt and the trauma out of the body so we can be free and liberated and create more space for who we truly are yes. and what we truly desire. Preach. Those are my words, it's fine. We skipped sex magic and coaching. There was actually quite a lot happening on day five, but none of it was really appropriate for camera, if you know what I'm saying. One of my personal favorite practices, and luckily in a castle. And like, come on, this outfit, like, she's so ridiculous. When I watch myself, I'm like, we gotta talk about her in third person. Like, bless her light, like, she is fucking wild, this queen. Love her so much. Get it, girl, you just go for it, do you? It's sort of like Hogwarts. It's often really easy to find something like the Mirror of Erised. That mirror is the one that... The mirror of Erised is the one that when you look into it shows you all of your dreams and visions in Harry Potter. 
What we're going to do is speak to the mirror of Erised and tell it who you are, who you are becoming, tell it what you are accomplishing, what you've come here to this earth to accomplish, who your most magical self is. Whatever the expression that comes through is, it's just you and the goddess and you proclaim to her, to the goddess inside of you, who you are here to be. Most of you know, if you've done any of my practices, rituals, I love mirror work. There is something so profound about seeing the God in yourself and working with just that, looking into the window of your own soul, your drishti, you and me, this is it, and proclaiming what's true. I mean, some of the most transformative times in my life were when I was doing mirror work every single day and just like, okay, like I'm fucking reprogramming myself, just me and me and God. Oh, it's nice to great. finally meet you. Finally feel a lot of feelings you haven't let feel before. Oh, waiting for so long just to talk to you. And I'll no longer wear a mask hiding who I am. Maybe small. Maybe you're not small. Though your legs shake before you, they are rooted and strong as the trees. I love that line. Though your legs shake before you, they are rooted and strong like the trees. Hallelujah! Preach! Yes, send me some redwood medicine. So many of these queens are coming to my other retreats. So I get to see them again. It's like been like, you know, six months or something. I'm so excited. <laughs> Once you come to one, you know. And now you have sisters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sisters you never had. I'm so grateful. And I am sorceress. I rise from and through and with and as my own power. This is why I spell sorceress differently. S-O-U-R-C-E-R-O-U-S because source comes from French to rise and O-U-S means to be abundant or abounding in full of. So when we are a sorceress in that way, we rise into our fullness. And so I just like a little, you know, she loves a play on words, you know what I'm saying? Extra special spelling. Thank you for letting the goddess come alive in me, for letting me bring women and sisters together to sing in the womb of the earth and remember we are her children. I love you. Never stop being batshit crazy. Oh, don't worry, I won't. Okay, let's go eat dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I took quite a bit longer than that. There was a lot of good proclamations about what I was doing and what I was being. But you know, I think that's a really important part of this work is like, it can't all just be so serious. I love that little like, don't ever stop being that shit crazy girl. Oh, don't worry, I won't. Cause like, it's true. I am fucking crazy compared to what the world thinks. And like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care at all. Cause like my life is fucking amazing and magical and like, what else could I possibly want to be doing but helping other people make their lives magical too? And then like, yeah, let's go to dinner, right? It's like, it's all one, it's all everything. Real magic is life. Take a second and just like look around you. There's magic in every single cell of every single moment, a choice to see the spark and a choice to see everything as love. Fucking love that queen. She's 20 years old. I'm like, hallelujah. Thank you, goddess, for giving me an opportunity to like send someone like that so young on their fucking journey. There's always one. There's always one 20 year old at my retreats who managed to make it and fucking slay. Real magic is healing. Real magic is being willing to be brave enough to go deep into the dark, scary places of yourself that you may have shut out for a long time having the humility to know that as human beings on this planet, we are not separate from the natural world. We are intimately a part of it. And when we so choose to understand that and to honor that, life opens up in a beautiful, expansive way. This experience of life is inherently magical. I'm not telling you. <sighs> That's like my seventh time watching that video. <laughs> I... I just feel the only thing that I would have added is like a little of the closing remarks and closing ceremony from the, from the final day and just how much beauty and magic there was. And I'm going to make my own video about the experience. So keep an eye out for that. Um, thank you all for sticking with me through this. I just feel so incredibly blessed and so, so grateful to be part of this experience of awakening women and people of all genders and ages and shapes and colors and, desires and magic, right? Like all different flavors of magic. And so 
those of you who are watching who've never seen me before or if you have, you know, I just want you to know that your magic is accessible to you and it might take hard choices. And one of the things my partner always says is hard choices, easy life, easy choices, hard life. And so sometimes it does require deep courage and bravery and a profound willingness to meet your shadow and things that like you've been told to fear or told not to talk about or think about or even allow yourself to experience. And so it's just my greatest, deepest honor to always, like not just the tagline, but always to welcome you to your most magical life to welcome you into the wholeness of yourself, to support your rising and your embodiment of your power. That's what I'm here for. And I'm gonna keep going because that's what my inner child asks of me and needs from me. And so it is just such a privilege and such a pleasure to be creating the wizarding world in the real world, you know? I'm like, to me, the wizarding world is the real world. <laughs> that other thing, I'm like, ah, I'm not so sure about it. So. <sighs> Again, I've got some epic little magical things for you all. If you would like to join the waiting list for my retreats, please click the link below. I will also tag the entire video that Sky posted. And thank you so much for allowing me the privilege and pleasure and deep honor always of welcoming you to your most magical life.